arranged in fire or be contact that will be conducted by three to the which are mentioned. Then they will explain to you about metal semiconductor or mid contact and lastly for that will be explained to you about family phenomena. So enjoy yourself watching this video. Hi, today we are going to discuss the topic of non rectifying of mid contact. As we have learned from the previous chapter, a short key diode is formed when the metal work function is greater than that of the end semiconductor or when the metal work function is smaller than that of the P semiconductor. An off mid contact is formed when the metal work function is smaller than the end semiconductor work function with phi n smaller than 5s. This is the energy band diagrams for the metal and N semiconductor when isolated and when in contact. A point intimate contact, the electrons flow from the metal to the semiconductor until thermal equilibrium is reached and the Fermi levels are aligned. This is because of the smaller work function of the metal. After the alignment of the Fermi levels, a potential drop equal to 5m minus 5s is developed across the semiconductor and that is why the energy bands in the semiconductor bend downwards at the surface. The electrons that cross from the metal to the semiconductor settle in a semiconductor at the junction. There is no depletion region in the semiconductor as there is no barrier for the electrons to flow from the semiconductor to the metal nor in the opposite direction. Hello, today we are going to learn about tunneling and a metal semiconductor contact. Stay focused, okay? A more commonly used method for establishing an ohmic contact between a metal and a semiconductor is to make the contact favorable to the tunneling of electrons in both directions. Mm, how to make the contact favorable? The contact is favorable when electrons are not required to climb a barrier as they can cross directly from the metal to the conduction band of the semiconductor and also in the reverse direction. I get it, what's next? The probability of tunneling depends on the width of the depletion layer W at the junction and the narrower the W, the higher the probability of tunneling. Now, let's see the probability of tunneling in semiconductor-semiconductor junction. For two semiconductor regions in contact, the width of the depletion layer is determined mainly by the doping of the more weakly doped region. The higher the doping of both regions, the smaller the width of the depletion layer W. Next, the probability of tunneling in a metal semiconductor contact. When a metal and semiconductor are in contact, the depletion layer exists only in the semiconductor. To obtain a small depletion layer W, the semiconductor is doped very highly and possibly to the degree of degeneracy at which the Fermi level is moved into the conduction band. Do you ever wonder what is the necessary condition for tunneling to take place? 
For tunneling to take place, it is necessary for the conduction band of one material to be located energy-wise opposite empty states in the conduction band of the other material. At thermal equilibrium, the Fermi levels of the metal and semiconductor are aligned. With reverse bias applied, the Fermi level of the semiconductor is depressed so that some electrons in the conduction band of the metal are at the same energy level at and across the tunnel from empty states in the conduction band of the semiconductor. This can be shown in this figure. This results in the tunneling of these electrons and easy current flow from the semiconductor to the metal. When a forward bias is applied, making the metal positive with respect to the semiconductor, electrons in the conduction band of the semiconductor are opposite empty states of the conduction band of the metal, which makes it possible for electrons to tunnel across. The bending of the energy bands when forward bias is applied is shown in this figure. Now, we have come to the end of the class. Before dismiss, let's recap what we have learned before. As a conclusion, a tunneling ohmic contact is obtained if the semiconductor is heavily doped. Normally, the doping of the semiconductor is determined by other considerations, such as its function in a device. To form a tunneling contact to a lightly doped semiconductor, a thin, heavily doped layer of the same conductivity is formed over the lightly doped semiconductor. The heavily doped layer is formed by ion implantation or epitaxy. Such a contact generally possesses a linear current voltage characteristic. The current voltage characteristics of a short key barrier diode and an ohmic contact is shown in this figure. Lastly, this figure shows the energy band diagram showing tunneling in both directions for a metal with both positive end and negative end contact. The end. Till we meet again. Thank you. Bye. Okay, that's all for us. I hope you will gain a lot of knowledge from this video. Thank you for watching it.